Hello, my name is Nandor. Welcome to this Nexperia quick learning video. I would like to show you how to select a MOSFET for a repetitive avalanche application. Inductive loads have grown to be this bridge between electrical and mechanical subsystems. Besides motors, we select the solenoid when we want an electrical signal to trigger a mechanical system. One of the challenges here is to preserve uh, steep beginning and end slopes to preserve timings for the mechanical system. However, on the electrical side, the inductors do not like their currents being changed so swiftly. So we use various selector switches, O-ring diodes, freewheeling diodes, and even auxiliary DC-DC converters to achieve these slopes. However, if we are willing to let our MOSFETs slip into avalanche mode, we can use a somewhat simplified circuit, as shown here. What happens is that we have a large current going through the inductor, and we want to open the MOSFET. This current will make a large voltage across the vol MOSFET and uh, push it into avalanche mode. So now we'll have large voltage across it and large current crossing the MOSFET, and the MOSFET will dissipate a large amount of energy. In return, that large voltage will also be applied to the inductor and will make its current decrease rapidly. The problem is some vendors do not provide enough or accurate information for uh, judging the lifetime of these uh, MOSFETs working in repetitive avalanche. However, Nexperia's repetitive avalanche uh, graded MOSFETs have graphs similar to these ones in their datasheet that help us ju do just that. So let's look at an application where we drive 30 microhenley road at an avalanche current of 10 amps at 3 kilohertz. We select a MOSFET, BUK9K52-60RA, which is a 16 amp, 60 volt device. And we take the avalanche current and trace it through the first graph. We can see that we come to a maximum avalanche time of about 2 microseconds. This is short, and we can always upgrade our MOSFET, but we also need to keep in mind that the current decay will be quite fast. Next, we calculate the energy that is built up in the inductor, and we trace it through the second graph, and we come to a number of repetitions of about 1 billion uh, to last for the lifetime of the switch. Really, what we're left to do is to ensure that the junction temperature is within range. To calculate the junction temperature, we use the energy multiplied by the frequency to get the power, and then we use the power to calculate an average temperature rise, to which we add the ambient temperature and an instantaneous temperature rise. The instantaneous temperature rise is capped at 30 degrees, and we see that uh, the MOSFET temperature is still below the 175 Celsius limit. For more information, visit nexperia.com, and thank you for watching.